Right. Okay, everyone. So welcome to today's session. And we're doing an online training on, you know, why do over 90% of couples never break 90? Um, what's well, an yeah. interesting question. Yeah, and, never break 80, actually. I mean, 80, sorry. No, yes. <laughs> so um, it's an interesting question because uh, everyone has their goal. You know, it might be 80. It could be 90. And for some, it could be 100 or even 110. And for other golfers, it could be breaking 70. And uh, uh, maybe some professionals out on the tour uh, could be even breaking that magical 60. Um, so everyone's at a different stage and walk in their uh, golfing life. Um, but why is that, Pete? 90% uh, uh, of golfers, uh, let, let's just investigate that and just ask ourselves a few questions. So. So yep. why a golfer can't break 80, 90 or 100 on the course, um, it's got to do with the, the key alignments are not in. And um, Pete, just tell us, share with us about what, what could be some of the key alignments to getting to that score. Well, basically, when we talk about alignment, we're talking about relative positions of uh, in, the, in the swing when the, the hands to the club face, you know, and the club shaft, so your grip's very important to have a good alignment in, in relation to the club. Uh, also in relation to where you're going to aim. But even during the swing, you, you don't want a whole lot of movement going on down below. You, you want to have a, a special way to use your, your knees and, and your pivot of your body. Uh, so if, if these elements, these mechanical elements are missing, uh, it's much more difficult to, to hit a good golf shot on a, a, shot on a consistent basis. You, you know, every every now and again, uh, you you can hit a good shot, uh, but uh, beginner's luck doesn't doesn't take us all that far. So, the actual mechanics of the golf swing really need to be under need to be known, and there needs to be a way that you can train those in, so that you can build your golf swing to a stage where you don't have to be thinking all about your technique, and you can actually play you know golf as far as ball to target and then enjoy the the strategy of the game as well. So, uh, but underlying it, if, you, if your swing mechanics are either faulty or unknown, uh, or just basically haven't been trained in, then you, you, you're gonna limit your ability to lower your score. Uh, your, your consistency and uh, control are gonna be and not just not, not there. Yeah. Um yeah, and 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 you you could also have some uh, faulty or false concepts. You know, just the concepts on how how something's performed uh, could yes. be could yes. be not correct. That's the next uh, thing. Yeah, the wrong a wrong idea. Is that if, if you have, if you either got no idea or the wrong idea, then you get your your ability to play the game uh, is certainly you're hitting a barrier. Yeah, so we hear of golfers with natural talent. I guess uh, I guess they're golfers that have the right ideas and the right concepts right from the start. Uh, maybe and maybe not. Uh, natural talent, you know, if they come from another sport or just the, the your intention to, to do something usually is pretty important. If you've got a strong intention to hit a golf ball, uh, you will hit it. It's just a case somewhere along the line uh, your, your lack of knowledge is going to stop you getting to that next level uh, of performance. And that's usually that's when frustration sets in for someone that's fairly good at, at ball sports. They they might get uh, their score down fairly quickly to you know, break 100, but then then it's, uh, then it's they have to go back to school to, to get their technique right and uh, get their concepts so they got the right idea. Uh, it's it's amazing being in the game uh, this uh, this amount of time to actually see how few people really uh, have a clear picture of what they want to do with the golf swing and the golf club. So that's why we're here today. Help. Yeah. So um, you know, talking about the the concepts, you know, one one concept of of why golfers would struggle to break these barriers is is a lack of belief that someone can do it. Now, everyone can do it. You've just got to know how and you've got to believe that you can do it. But 
the very first thing is, do you believe you can do it or do you not? Because whatever you believe is exactly right, okay? You tend to become whatever you believe. So that's for the mental side. And uh, it also needs a plan and a process. And um, what we have here with, with Peter, what Peter's um, made and what we've created is a, is a process to be able to uh, achieve these goals, you know, through a program or a plan. Um, let's have a look at uh, what part of the game will lower your score the quickest, Pete. So if we look at the first part of the game, it, it, it's probably, you would, you would say, putting, chipping and pitching. Well, d definitely the, the benefit there is uh, when you get around the green, the, the scoring shots, you're going to have less, less putts, less, and you get closer to the hole where you're chipping and you're pitching. And, and uh, if you can do that, then you're going to minimise your, you're, going to, you're definitely going to take shots off your round. But the other nice thing about building from the chip shot out is that you're actually building the, the components for the full swing right from the start. And that's where you should really start to build a golf swing. So if I was to uh, set up going this way, a lot, of, a lot of golfers, I've been surprised in traveling around the world with our program and delivering it to, to golf coaches and, and amateurs around the world, how much confusion there is about the difference between the address position and the impact position. And this is where you really first learn to build the impact with a chip shot. So that address for a shot, say a chip shot, your feet a little closer together, your weight leans a little more left, so you're hitting down. That's another important thing, the concept. You must hit down for the ball to go up and you must make contact with the forward lean of the shaft. So address is there. So just knowing that, that the difference between the address position and the impact position, you know, that, that alone not only can build a great chip shot, but just that idea coming into the golf ball for a person that's got a really high score, maybe shooting 130, 120, that idea will straight away uh, improve their score, their, their ability to hit good shots. But with a little bit of training and you just start, okay, there's the dress. You just build. In our program, we discovered that if you start really simple and, uh, and, and, and small, you can build your competence pretty quickly and then in turn you build your confidence. Now that looks pretty simple and it really is if once, you, once you've been uh, done a few drills and, and understand the difference there and there and then just make a little swing and then. Perhaps just go on the grass there, Pete, where it's a little bit lighter, that, that'd be good. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm in the light here. Okay, so out in the sunshine. So there's, there's the, so just learning to do that little shot, that chip shot soon leads, soon leads to the pitch. So you, get, you start to get the hinging of the wrist and now, now we get a miniature full swing. And then from there, basically, uh, we build bigger and bigger swings. And if you go that way about it, you can certainly uh, lower your score from the high score. You, you start to come down and you, you get your belief system up, your confidence, and uh, away you go. Um, yeah, very good. So... Um, Another thing uh, that you want to do is make sure you, your ball, ball can get in play. Okay, so if you can get your ball in play off the tee, and if you hit your second shot somewhere up the fairway or around the green, um, you can still score. But often if your driver from the tee takes you out of, out of the game, uh, it's also no good, is it, Pete? That's right. Well, basically, that's another part of the game that's, uh, that it seems when you see, see the tour pros, they, they're hitting it long, but, and because they hit it so long, uh, they can be in the rough, but if they're close to the green or, or within a wedge of the green, they can get it out of the rough and on the green. But most amateur golfers that are playing the game don't hit, that, hit the ball over 300 yards. They're more likely to be, do well to hit it 200 yards. 
left. And then it's very important that you hit the ball in the fairway and can find it so you can hit it again. So accuracy with your driver is really important. Uh, so that's when you get the longer club, what's really important is that your swing is on the right path. You don't want to have a swing that goes over the top and cuts across it. Otherwise, uh, with a little open club face, you get a nice big slice. So learning to control the path of the downswing, especially, uh, well, all clubs, but it, it really gets highlighted with the driver and the, and the long irons. But if you start coming outside in, uh, you're either with a closed or square club face to the path, you've got the ball going low and left, uh, and after one or two or a little few of those, you start to leave the club face a bit open, then you start to see the big slice and, you, and you're not giving it a compression. So uh, you, you, hit, you swing faster and you get less compression that goes shorter. So controlling the path of your swing, controlling the club face, all a part of building a golf swing from the ground up. And uh, if you can, you can do it with your short clubs, you can then uh, it's not long before you're getting more confidence in your in your full swing. So I see so many golfers at the driving range. We, we haven't got a driving range here at Truman's Row. We've got a golf range. Uh, it's uh, a little narrower. It's got plenty of length, but uh, basically no drivers. You learn to hit, you can hit three wood, but even then, you're going to learn a lot more. You're going to improve your game a lot more if you, if you build your technique around your short game first and then build your, your longer game. Uh, it's a, a di different places I've been, driving ranges. You, you see most people coming out with their driver and their, their, their fairway wood and their three iron or four iron. And uh, they, they never go near the short game. But it's, if they build a short game, uh, that's where our program really, uh, you know, the, the confident short game really leads to uh, building your power because if you can hit it nice and square and you've got the right technique, you've got less strain on your body and you get more speed for less effort. So there's a logical way to go about uh, building your game. And I think that's definitely, I know my growing up myself, not having that pathway was... Uh, uh, it, was a, it was a detriment, and I just wish I had. Wish I knew then what I know now and, and had this program because uh, it would be a progression towards lower and lower scores. And uh, whether you want to break the, the 120, 100, 90, 80, 70, it's still the same fundamentals. All you're going to do is you're going to refine them. There's, the, the game becomes less and less complicated as you get your, your good fundamentals uh, onto automatic. You have to think less and you can enjoy the hit more. So that's, uh, that's been our discovery and uh, putting this program together with a minimum amount of pieces that you have to put together allows a golfer to, to get there in a less uh, struggling way. That's, it, there's always, it's always a challenge. The game is a great game. It's a, it's a, it's a game of a it is a bit of a challenge, but it's, it, it's the guided struggle versus the blind struggle. Uh, that's what I was told when I first started uh, uh, playing the tour. Cal Nagel said, he said, the first 20 years are the hardest. He said, after that, it's all downhill. <laughs> he, he was joking, but basically it's, it's a journey. It's, it's not a, you're not going to get on the tour and be on the top of the leaderboard in the first six months. Uh, yeah. So, so um, what do you, let's have a look at what you need to do to plug into the process of breaking 80. Um, first of all, you need to have some consistency. And within consistency, you've got to have a reliable routine, a good impact, and having the club on a consistent path. So, correct. So just explain so those. The, routine, um, uh, uh, yeah. the address routine is where you help set up your, your, your alignments. Uh, one, to the club itself. Two, to the golf ball. And have your body in the right position. If you can do this in, a, in the same way from the small swings to the big swings, 
what you'll, you'll discover is you get a kind of a rhythm to it and, and you can just get the flow and you're just there hitting the golf ball. I might get a beer. Oh, nearly. If you if you hit in those barrels down there and it goes in, uh, it makes a ringing sound and you 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 win a, a it's a beer or a, or a glass of red. So uh, it's it's always the challenge of the day. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's uh, every every day the bell goes off for somebody here. So what what do you got a bucket of balls and you, you hit like three in a row within there? I mean, you, 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 got, you get a few glasses of wine into your opinion. Yeah, no, it's that's well. I haven't, I haven't done that. I've, I've knocked, I've knocked it in the barrel. But uh, I remember a little story. Lee Trevino grew up on a small driving range, something similar to this in uh, New Mexico, and uh, he, he, he used to practice when he wasn't giving out golf balls. He'd be practicing, and that's why he developed such a great control of the golf ball. Uh, and he used to, you know, used to gamble against the. Uh, the patrons that came in so uh, he used that's how he used to make a, the, his his extra money that got him on the tour so uh hitting your ball to a target especially the short targets a great way to start building your confidence build your competence first and your confidence comes second this time just missed again I didn't okay. hear the sound. No, it missed by three feet, that one. Landed the right distance, but it was three feet to the side of the, the barrel. Anyway, so, and please, enough of my practicing. Uh, what's, what's next, Chris? What else do we need besides a good routine and, a, and the path, of course? Well, we, we don't want to be swinging the club on the wrong path. Yeah. So we want the right kind of start, but we don't want to start picking it up we want to really understand how the hands can control not only the club, but if you if you use the hand correctly, the hip pivot starts early, and that's where you get the correct back sling. That's just pin high again, but just a little left. Right that time. Yeah. So the path, very important. And you've got the uh, the impact. <clears throat> so the moment of truth. Yeah, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I think we can share uh, what the impact looks like here. Coming into impact, if you're coming on the outside, you, you, you're going to get a, a club head ahead of your shot, a handle and it's going to be the wrong sort of shot. To get a good golf shot, as you come down from the inside, there's a forward lean of the shaft at the moment of impact. Now, from here on, the right arm is slightly bent at the beginning, and as that right arm straightens away from the shoulder, you get this area we call the impact zone. And that's what the good players have. They have the ability to get that the club traveling down through the ball. They don't have it coming up out of it or, or blocking off. So building that impact zone, very important. And we have a couple of drills that'll help just develop this to a high level. And you can you can then build up at that effortless ability to hit the ball and bring the club through, get control. Doing it with the small stuff first leads to the big stuff next. Exactly. So if we have a look at what else we need to do to be able to, um, to break 80 or, or even you know break 100, break 90. Um, just different levels of competence within these things. So we want to have a good, confident short game. So have good putting, where you're confident with your putting, controlled chipping, and we want to have the uh, pitching and bunker play all firing. So it um, takes a while to build these skills, but, um, you know, it's quite simple within our system, isn't it, Peter? Yeah, it, it is a journey. So, it, 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 you know, if it was that easy, it'd be just, it wouldn't be any challenge. So golf, uh, part of the beauty of it is it, it's, it's a game of a lifetime and it is a journey to build your golf swing. You're not going to get out of bed one day and have it. It's, it the enjoyment is in the process of building. So uh, 
if the, if you wake up each day and have a little extra piece to add to the puzzle and uh, the mystery of the golf swing gradually you fill in the in all the little parts of the jigsaw puzzle and ultimately you have a golf swing where it's smooth it's coordinated and effortless and less and less conscious thinking required so that when you step up it's going to hit one shot just basically once you're lined up just watch the ball and hit it maybe this one oh right over it too too good a shot <laughs> and it had backspin so we'll we'll say it went in the hole um okay so let's have a look at the final component pete that you need and um the final component is effortless power so if we look at effortless power we want so i'm just going to move something around my screen here so you can all see um so effortless power going a to b we want a fast reliable release and you want to be working out a little bit so that you can get the speed so third component of being able to break 80 and lower is to have that effortless power which includes yes, a sir. to b fast reliable release and working out you know doing training to to um get some power get flexibility in your body as well as uh some strength in the muscles but basically the strength really uh, once you've got some sort of uh, relaxed flexibility is in the swing, this little device here really uh, is, helps us discover the, the backswing, getting the power in the backswing. So when I swing it back, the, this, 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 the force goes out to the, swings out the club head. So then when you can feel like, oh, you know, I, I, I can get myself in a good backswing position, so then you're ready to build, this is an orange whip and you can really see when you decide that you're gonna hit the ball, not with a club head first, but club head last going back and give it a blast coming down. So basically- Excellent. Yeah, just to finish that one there. So as I throw, if we were to slow motion this down, while I'm attempting just to throw this end at the ball, this shaft and, and your joints are flexible. So that, that the last thing that happens is the actual release of this club happens down here when you throw it in the right direction. So this ability to, to swing it back and then throw it down uh, is very much responsible for your effortless power rather than powerless effort. Excellent. So that. That's really good, Pete. Um, fantastic little session today. I've just posted in the uh, chat box here for anyone that uh, is interested, um, breaking 80. Um, there's a little survey that you fill in first and it just identifies us uh, with some of the issues. And you can even arrange a 15 minute chat session with us. Um, so Peter, thank you very much for today. And uh, thanks everyone else for joining in uh, to today's session we hopefully see on the breaking 80 program at some point and it's not only just about breaking 80 there's some people that are shooting in the 70s want to break 70 and there's also some people shooting over 100 or even uh, in the 90s and want to break 90 so it's uh, it's all about the the process just plug into the process of our program and you'll see the results thanks pete look forward to seeing everyone um, in the next session Thanks very much, Chris, and thanks everybody for your, your interest, and we'll see you on the leaderboard. Okay. Cheers, everyone. Bye.